Alright everyone, welcome back to Cody's Lab. So, today I've got a bag full of some green apples, which I actually picked off my tree in the spring two years ago. And what I want to do with these apples is extract the pectin from them. You see, unripe fruit like this contains high levels of pectin, which will eventually convert to sugars as the fruit ripens. But the pectin is useful for gelling up jellies and jams. So I'll just fill this little pot up with the <laughs> extremely freezer burned apples, put in some water, and let them simmer for probably several hours. The idea here is just to dissolve the pectin out of the fruit into the liquid. Use the smaller burner. They can turn it down pretty low. So, it's done cooking. Now I'm going to run it through a strainer to collect the liquid. Cool. Okay, it seems to be done dripping. Now, obviously, this still has a lot of pectin in it. It'd be best to squeeze the material through some kind of filter, but I'm just trying to get a sample here. Okay, so here we are with our filtered apple pectin. And this right here is actually adequate to preserve food. Just add a little bit of sugar, maybe a little bit of acid, and your fruit, and it should gel up, and that's basically the gist of it. The only issue is this is going to give a strong apple-y flavor to anything you do. So if you have something that's kind of a weak flavor, maybe you'd want to keep going with the uh, preparations here. This is probably really only something you'd want to do industrially, but let me pour off some of that so I've got some just in case I fail here. And the pectin is a soluble fiber, which is soluble in water. It is not soluble in alcohol. Now this could be any kind of alcohol, but it does have to be rather strong, otherwise you'll use a lot of it. So I'm just going to pour this in, and the pectin should precipitate out as a gelatinous material. So that's about double the volume there. Let's see if that was enough. Yeah, I think it was. So that'll kind of form a goop, which hopefully I can filter out. Let's see if the colander will trap it. Looks like it ought to. So now all the impurities are running through. The more that liquid I can get, the better. And it might also be good to re-dissolve it in some water and then do this again. I don't think I will because I'll just use so much alcohol. I could recycle the alcohol by distilling it off, but that's actually illegal, so I'm not going to be doing that. There's uh, the pectin. I'm going to rinse it with a little bit more alcohol, just to make sure I get as much of the apple out as possible. Okay, I'm going to lay it out on some paper to let it dry. Shouldn't take too long because the alcohol will evaporate rapidly. Mm -hmm. Maybe the paper is not such a good idea. Well that's drying out. I'm going to take some of these choke cherries I've had stored up and cook them down and make some juice.
So here's the pectin now dried. It's very well stuck to the plate. But I will scrape as much up as I can. And what I have is essentially powdered pectin. I managed to extract about a gram of pectin. So I actually just ran to the store and grabbed a commercial box of pectin so that I can get the recipe here. And I think uh, sour cherry is the closest, so that's what I will be following. Except, I don't have very much pectin. In fact, I've got one gram, and this here says it's got 49 grams. So, that actually comes out pretty nice because a teaspoon is 1 48th of a cup. This calls for three and a half cups. So I'll just get uh, three and a half teaspoons. Makes sense, right? Okay, so there's three and a half teaspoons of cherry juice. And I'm gonna add four teaspoons of sugar. Can't wait to hear you guys complaining about me using US measurements. <laughs> Three and four. Okay. Obviously, this isn't going to be very much jelly. Let me uh, scoot in my pectin. There's a lot of ways that I could have increased yield. But I'm just doing this as a demonstration. If you're actually going to be doing this at home, probably just stick with the apple pectin recipes. Okay, so now I just need some acid. I've got some citric acid here. I don't know how much I need to add because the commercial pectin comes with acid in it. So I think what I'm going to do is uh, heat this up, stir it around, taste it, and then add acid until I get the right amount of tartness, just, just by taste. Microwave. <laughs> Let's give this a little bit of a stir to start. Put in a second dish. Let's nuke it for a few seconds. Should do it, yeah. Well, that's really all I needed to do, just kind of meld it together. Let's have a taste of that. Okay. That seems about right. Let's let it cool off and see if it'll set. Probably just stick it in the fridge for a little while. Now that it's had a chance to cool off, it has set and solidified. Awesome. I think I could have probably even gotten away with a little bit more juice. Uh, I think the amount of pectin I added was actually a little bit too much. But, there you go. Let me uh, cut into this and get some off and put it on some toast. <laughs> there we go. Some choke cherry jelly on toast. Can't get much better than that. Anyway, hope you all enjoyed. I'll see you next time.